Hello, I'm John Rush from The Emotions Expert. I get a lot of conversations with people pertaining to love and what is love and what do we do when we fall in love and people who don't seem to find love and all the kind of permutations in between. And then when you talk to people who are presumably in love or are in love, you get a different a different feedback as to those people looking for love as to those who are in love. It's it's a convoluted area of thought, feelings, emotions, viewpoints, ideologies, religions, cults, goodness knows what. And it all comes into play. And it depends on where you are and who you are as to how you perceive what love is. You get a lot of people who are not in love, who would do anything to fall in love. They have an ideology about falling in love and they have so much love to give the right person. They just can't find that right person. And they are bereft of everything because it's just not fair that other people seem to find nice people and fall in love, but they can't. And there's always a list of excuses why they can't. The people they find are never good enough. The situations they're in aren't really conducive to falling in love. Who they are and their background and everything is another another point which precludes them falling in love. And so it goes on. And you realize that after a while, when people start making excuses, what it is deep down is a degree of selfishness. It's all about them, what they want, what they need, what they feel, how they look, how they want to do this, how the other person has to be, how the parameters have to be, and all of these kind of things. There's nothing, there's no give. There's nothing about the other person. I know it's difficult if you don't have anybody, you can't talk about what other people are or are not. But nevertheless, it is all about themselves. There's no room for anybody else which doesn't actually match the checklist. And quite often you can fall in love with somebody who is completely opposite to what you think about or feel about and fall in love with them head, head over heels. And all the checklists which you actually had in your mind just disintegrate. They don't exist anymore. There's something alien about them because you don't care anymore. You're so in love with that other person. You love their faults. You love who they are, what they are. There are things you don't like about them, but you really don't care about that because you're so in love with them. And so it goes on. It's a very difficult thing. Uh, when you, I was talking earlier on about falling in love. If you come from a religious background, you may be biased towards religious aspects. So you find somebody who falls into line with your religious thoughts and feelings or your cultural background. Because some people are very culturally sort of motivated. Oh, my culture does this. My culture does that, which is a load of absolute rubbish. Uh, whatever your culture does, you do what you want. Your culture doesn't dictate you. You dictate your culture and you dictate your religion, you don't allow, allow your religion to dictate you. Because if you do, you're going to be up against insurmountable problems for the rest of your life. And so it goes on and, oh, I'm used to this, or I've had parents who were married for 63 years and they've never had an argument and I want to be the same. And other people say, oh, I've, my parents have married four times and, you know, that everybody seems to be okay now about it. And so it goes on. It depends on who, what, why, where, when. It's horses for courses. But one of the baselines about falling in love is allowing yourself to actually fall in love. The moment you hear people say, and I've heard this so, so many times from the podcasts and radio broadcasts and things, well, I let them make the first move. It's always somebody else has to make the first move, never you. Well, I'll see how it goes, as if the other person is going to hang on for one months and years just for you to get your act together because you're so stubborn and sort of negative about anything that you won't allow the free flow of thoughts and feelings to materialize. It's a lot of things which people actually preclude, them, preclude themselves by just listening to what they say and how they say it. And there's also this modern thing today is I need my space. Well, I know that I need my space too. But when you're in a relationship, you need to be together. You need to have a oneness. So it's not I and you, it's us and we. 
it's the plural. Together you will do that. It doesn't mean you can't individually do things and have whatever you want which suits you. It's something togetherness and not, well, he does this or she does that and I do this and I, I do that and whatever it may happen to be. And so what happens at the end of it, you're two people cohabiting and you may or may not enjoy sex, I don't know, but what you're doing, you're just something which is convenient. It's a relationship of convenience, and it saves you going out on your own for meals and holidays and things, and there's someone to talk to when you get home, or maybe just the presence of somebody when you get home. And so many people live a life of just existing as opposed to loving, and it's convenient to exist with that other person because you know them, they know you, and you basically then get on living two separate line, lives with just the cohabiting sort of a convenience every so often. It's a very, very sad situation to be in. But this is down to a selfishness. This is all about you. And a lot of people go into life with this all about me. What do I want? Well, that's that's true. You've got to go into life with what you want, because if you don't get what you want, then what are you doing with your life? But at the same token, when you actually go for a relationship, you've got another party to think of, because that party is supposed to be part of your life. And if all you can do is think about yourself and not the other party, other than it's a convenience and it's nice for the moment, but in the long term, will it actually materialize? Will it be sustainable? And all of these things, is it something else to think about? You've got to understand who you are and all the checklists which you have in your mind you know, falling in love is not a Mills and Boone book on romance and or chivalry and all of these kind of things. The reality is something quite different. And some people together go through hell and high water and sustain the relationship. And it becomes far more loving and understanding and passionate and everything else. And some people at the first hurdle, oh, I don't like this, and he said that, and she said that, and I don't see why I should do this, and his parents are always interfering, or her parents are interfering, or they want us to do this, and they want us to do that. You have got to speak your mind, and you've got to lay down the rules as you both see them, and you've both got to agree, even if you agree to disagree, you've both got to agree on the understanding which is between you. Therefore, you are living a common cause. There's something which is dwelling between you, which is concurrent, it's coherent, it's synergistic, it's all the wonderful, marvellous things, it's called love. And if you can do that, then you can get over just about anything. It's when you actually start falling apart and you agree that you do this and she does that and he does this and her, she does that and all of these kind of things. And there's nothing wrong with bits like that but when you have a large part of your life living on your own it changes the parameters what in fact are you doing what are you why not live as a single person and enjoy a single person's life with lots of other people around you to actually enjoy the the creativity which others may give you you must understand all this but selfishness is one of the biggest killers and meanness too don't allow other people to come to you to make the decision. You've got to make sometimes the first step yourself. You've got to do what you need to do. Show the other person who you are and what you are and not wait for them to do it for you to judge and then make a decision. This not going to work. Falling in love is exactly what you make it. Nothing more, nothing less.